so this morning we have three awesome, um, well-read uh, presenters this morning. I'll have them introduce themselves, if that's okay with you. Sure. So gentlemen, take it away. And what I want to do now is introduce Robert, who is going to go a little bit more now and talk to us about video. So I can do that. Switch out the presentation. Good morning, everyone. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of excited to be here today. Actually, today is a benchmark day for me, and as soon as my slideshow comes up, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. So it's kind of an anniversary go to. Okay, excellent. Great. Again, my name is Robert Cothy. I'm the owner of Factsback Websites and Video. Uh, we've been in business for over 10 years now doing websites, and, and video truly is becoming an extension of the internet. So for a few years now, we've, we've ex really been producing some really fun videos for our clients. Today's a benchmark day for me because as of last night sometime when I was sleeping, my personal Facebook, I mean a YouTube page, just hit the 100,000 or just cleared the 100,000 video views. Now I feel silly now compared to the 100 million? <laughs> yeah, 108 million views as far as putting in perspe perspective. But, you know, again, that is still a major benchmark when it comes to the, the video world for being online for less than four years. One video alone actually did that. Uh, about, it's just under 80,000 views just for one video. The rest of them um, just had average usage. Um, but, and I'm going to talk about that in detail. Um, getting to know you. H how many people here have a website for your business? Okay, or run a website? Pretty much everybody and... Okay, who has a YouTube account? Okay, so about half, about half have a YouTube account. Now, who has videos on their YouTube account? <laughs> okay, I've got one person with a YouTube account without videos on it, okay. And who has a Facebook page? Just, uh, again, 90%, this guy won't raise his hand no matter what I ask. <laughs> so, so it shows you right now that there was a day that businesses essentially, you know, it would have been 30%, 20%, half the room, 100% have a Facebook account. Um, my wife has one, she just doesn't use it or, you know, connect to it, but she still has the account. So uh, Joe's going to go into more detail on actually the right usage of those kind of accounts. But you have to understand the numbers. You really, truly have to understand the numbers. And when it comes to traffic, Google gets 34,000 searches per second. Per seconds. 34,000 searches per second. It took me 30 seconds to say that phrase. I can't even do the math, it's over a million. Yahoo, eh, 3,200 searches per second. They're kind of, you know, they're kind of teetering. If this were a boxing match, they're kind of stumbling, about to go down. They used to have about 40% market share in that respect. So if you think it should be Google-centric, the numbers don't lie. Bing, 927, they're kind of the newbie on the, on the block. They're trying to stand up right now. They're the toddler, deep pockets. Microsoft's got lots, lots of money, but the mob has decided that they're not a player yet, despite their money right now. And YouTube has two billion searches per day, which divides down to 23,100 searches per second, which essentially makes YouTube the number two search mechanism in the world. Now. Number one owns number two. So therefore, one plus two is over 90% market share. It's absolutely amazing. In fact, people who start from Google, 28% of the traffic goes directly to YouTube. So 30% of the time, people are going to watch a video. They're starting, it, they're starting at Google, and they're going to Google to watch a video. Anyone here know how to weld? Okay, nobody. I bought a $99 stick welder from, from Walmart, and I just wanted to repair a trailer part, just a piece of, of metal. I found some terrific videos from a professional welding instructor about striking an arc, striking an arc, and he kept going like this, going like this, and, and watch out, if you do it too, too hard, you stick to it, and blah, 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 and don't touch this. If I'd have got a book on welding, it would have looked like a smiley face. It would have been a diagram with, with a curve that's static and not moving, compared to the guy with the stick welder just showing me with the sparks striking an arc. So I might have started to Google on how to weld, but then it took me right to YouTube, and obviously that's where I got my best advice on how to fix my trailer. Basket weaving, I'm just taking a nice neutral subject right now. 
I'm going to present to you a strategy that is very powerful if you know how to harness the strategy. Because the good news is, is that video is perceived to be expensive. And in fact, a lot of times, up until a few years ago, most businesses could not afford video or would not want to put their entire marketing budget to video. I mean, if you only knew what kind of money Roger used to get 20 years ago. Roger, so it was good, good days 20 years ago, wasn't it? Good days, my friend. Good days, good days. We're, we're, I mean, pro he easily can get fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a project, right? Absolutely. Easily, okay? Roger's a very ex experienced video person. These days, s same skill set, but there's a lot of pressure on the market. So I think even you've come down a little, right? I have. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pressure on the market. And thanks to people like me who ran out and bought a camera also in kind of not even imagine getting $15,000 for a video. So, sorry, Roger. But it's for the greater good of humanity. <laughs> All right? Uh, but let's take something neutral like basket weaving. I went to Google. I typed in basket weaving. Uh, and what you're going to first get would be, in this particular case, basketweaving.com did not feel like doing a pay-per-click uh, campaign. So because there's no pink, no, no, okay. There's no pink border around that. If you see something in pink, it means they paid to be there. All right, it's a paid sponsor. And uh, I know uh, Joe's gonna go into that also. So the first three results are relevant search results based on Wikipedia is always up there, basketweaving.com. There's your first advice. Your domain name, if it has what somebody's looking for in your domain name, uh, you have a better chance. It's, it's a real high scoring part as far as relevance. That's worth writing down because like, you're a not-for-profit. What's the name of your organization? Mother Centers. Mother Centers. So now, Mother Centers, if they know who they are, then they're going to go straight to them. They're more than likely to find it. But somebody randomly is not going to search on Mother Centers. Someone's going to go, overwhelmed mother needs help. Okay? Now, if you guys purchased overwhelmedmotherneedshelp.com, attached it to mothercenters.com, then you would get one of the highest score for your Google search because what they're looking for is in the domain name. There are companies who own 100, 200, 300 domain names uh, using that strategy alone for certain keyword searches. So it's no, it's no coincidence that basketweaving.com has come up first under organic searches. Plus, obviously, it's relevant. These are all natural search results, and right here, Google does something called mixed search results. In this particular case, images came up first. Sometimes Google Maps might come up first if it's something, like you said, banks in New York. It might say you're looking for a bank and it's gonna give you a list of banks in, in your area. And then the, when you scroll down just a little bit here, see it says basket weaving video, right here, more videos for basket weaving, videos, and then at the bottom in this particular case, shopping results. So now, Everyone except for him have a website. Actually, you probably have one. You just won't raise your hand. Who wants to be on page one of Google? Okay. Even he wants to be on page one of Google. Well, guess what? Due to Google's new strategies, not only did they shoot our foots in taking away approximately seven or eight more slots on page one of just websites because this mixed search results took away real estate from the websites, but so, so basically you have less of a chance to showing up on page one just for a website because they took away the slots. But there's only, there's only a handful of page uh, slots for page one, so unless you happen to be basket weaving, it becomes more and more difficult these days to get the coveted first page slot. The good news is, because video is more expensive, the strategy I'm gonna give you, even if you do it on the cheap, uh, with reasonable videos, is gonna work for a while until the secret's out, and then everyone's gonna have more videos than they have websites, and it's just gonna disintegrate. So here comes a terrific strategy. When you click through to more video results, I'm gonna back up one. So click through to more video results for basket weaving. What happens is, now we actually have a paid result. I think that was pink. Yeah, okay, you can see there's a white outline here. So the first two are Apparently basket weaving is putting their money just to the video results, so they're actually willing to do a paid campaign for the YouTube only. But the cool part is the same exact order that the videos appear on Google is the same exact order that they appear on YouTube because no coincidence, Google owns YouTube. It's the same database, the same search, the same mechanism, the same tools. So with that said, 
when you say more results YouTube basket weaving, if I'd have gone straight into YouTube, typed in basket weaving directly, cut out the middleman, this is the exact same order of results. So, yes? I, I can see that, but basket weaving is really a tutorial. Okay. When you're looking for searches that aren't necessarily a more of a service or a how-to, is it still going to be that same? That's, that's the strategy I'm going to give you right now. Sorry. So I'm going to give you a business. Really, I was going neutral right now because some people who know the industry, I don't think anyone except for me knows basket weaving because my mother's an artsy, crafty person. And I have done underwater basket weaving in Lake George. Okay. <laughs> But since it's a business neutral type thing, except for basketweaving.com, now let's go to the practical application of, of this. When you type in New York chiropractors, again, a service, right now, at this very nanosecond, when I did that search, there were no video results for New York chiropractors. That exact, and that's not an unrealistic phrase, is it? Okay, it's not like I'm, I'm saying you know, Dr. So-and-so. I'm just generalizing New York chiropractors and say Huntington chiropractors. So there are no video results for New York chiropractors. If Any chiropractors here? So if you were a chiropractor, the strategy is, and I'll go into it again, if you made six or seven or eight small videos, 30 seconds to two minutes a piece, using the same footage, I mean, right now Roger's recording with two cameras, three people, he, we could probably make 20 pieces out of this if we wanted to. 30 if we felt like it. All right, we're gonna have two hours of footage just for today's events. We could just carve it up into almost every sentence if we wanted to and document it on YouTube based on the, the subject. So if a chiropractor can't make eight videos, the reason you wanna make a handful of videos is because having just one relevant video may not trigger the mixed search results. But if Google's database sees that that subject has a number of videos for it, as I'll show you with one of my clients, because this works, you make enough videos to trigger mixed search results if it doesn't already exist. Lawnmower Repair Huntington, New York, all right? You can actually do this search, say, Lawnmower Repair New York, and the mower shop will come up in any variation. The most important part about this strategy is not how good you are, it's how horrible your competition is. Okay, there, there are some of you who are in an industry that are up against some real tough players, and you can just implement, you know, hire all three of us, and you may not move. Uh, no offense to all three of us, but there are some industries that are so entrenched, like let's say, try to be the number one online shopping site right now going against Amazon. Good luck with that, okay? But in this particular case, the one more repair industry are Neanderthals, absolute total Neanderthals. So there is absolutely no relevance prior to me coming along with my client and making videos for him. So what we did, we made about seven videos. When you put in, I'll just start with Huntington, one more repair Huntington, right there, Hurricane Irene Generator Repair. That's made by me uh, during Hurricane Irene, put on YouTube, and it's the first thing you see. Now, are you more inclined to click on the ones without the pretty picture or the one with the pretty picture? The picture. So already, it's got a thumbnail. The strategy is actually almost Boring you in like a siren going, ooh, look at me, I got a picture. So the strategy is fantastic in that respect alone, that when you click on that, more, okay, that's me. So now when you put in uh, the search of New York, one more repairs, that's us, a little animation. Arthur said animations are fun. This was, this was a 15 second, hi, I'm Mo the Talking One More. I was teaching myself animation. If you're gonna learn something, you might as well get paid for it. So my client, I just basically just practiced with the lawnmower and I made him mow the talking lawnmower. So a 15 second welcome video, 17 seconds, sorry, is one of the highest tracking lawnmower repair videos on the internet and it goes straight to the mower shop as a business. Followed also with its buddy, lawnmower repair the mower shop Huntington Station, New York, which is another video we made that's three minutes about lawnmower repair. We made variations, chainsaw repair, generator repair, Hurricane Irene generator repair. So we made the eight or nine videos that we needed. So when you click on more results, that's us, that's us, that's not us. Where'd that come from? The first three right here, you can have up to six or seven videos of just us, until this guy came along, who is this? <laughs> Boulevard, where is Boulevard? It's upstate. Upstate, okay, so they're not competition right now, but between now 
be, between when I did this this week and prior, prior to that, these guys finally got in the game and made themselves a video. So, the strategy. Make enough videos to trigger mixed search results. It depends on how bad your competition, not how good you are. Find open keywords. So, I, I have a slide for that. Make many videos. And the description is absolutely most important. All right? I mean, there's a picture right there of somebody holding a rubber chicken. Your whole video can be somebody holding a rubber chicken going like this, right? Your whole video can be that. But if you describe when you load it, upload it to YouTube as being lawn mower repair, Huntington Station, New York, the mower shop repairs, lawn mowers, chainsaws, whatever, what's going to happen is you'll get found because your description is exactly the keywords, but the, the mob will be very disappointed when they see it's just some person shaking a rubber chicken and they're going to start giving you the thumbs down and you'll never be found again. So, yeah. Can you use the same video and just name it? You, not entirely because they, they're fingerprinted by YouTube. They know the exact file size, they know exact number of frames. Um, if you made it just four seconds longer, you could. Um, or change the file name and made it four seconds longer or three seconds shorter. Then the fingerprinting don't match up. So, but if you tried it exactly the same video, you're, uh, you're not gonna be too successful. Um, but to Robert's point earlier, if you've got a very long video that might make, have multiple steps, you may be better off breaking that up into into shorter videos. Step one, step, 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 two, one, step, step two, step three, rather than the entire video. Then, you know, you haven't cheated, you know, because I think if somebody saw the four minutes longer video, you start to get the thumbs down. But somebody sees, you know, see, find out more in step two of the video, um, you'll, you'll rank up higher, as Robert was showing earlier, I think. Is there a but key to getting them sequential? Because sometimes I'll see a three, four part, and you can't find part three, part four comes up before three. Yeah, click on the actual creator. So in my case, it'd be by fax back, you click on fax back, then you're going straight to their page, and more than likely they loaded them sequentially. Okay. The search, you probably will never get them sequential. Right. Um, so again, the description is most important. You can be shaking the rubber chicken. That's probably a euphemism for something. Um, <laughs> you can, so you could be have the video of, of literally just doing nothing having to do with one more repair, but you'll still get found until the mob starts giving you the thumb down, thumbs down. So how do you decide what videos to make for your website? You know, we've, we've given the idea of a whole bunch of things. Well, follow the categories of your website. Follow the categories. So for example, I do a whole bunch of things. I'm also the author of a book, Millionaire Secrets Revealed. I do websites, I do videos. So my primary categories, I have a video for websites. I have a video for videos. I have a video for seminars. What a coincidence I'm doing one right now. I have a welcome message video on this, and they're all being housed on YouTube. So I'm actually getting traffic accidentally by YouTube, even though the main reason I made these videos is to support my website. So here's the video page. This is my video message. When you click on that, it plays the video. Coincidentally, and this is not because I'm some kind of mastermind as far as search engine optimization on videos, it just sort of turns out when I, when I went to Google and said Long Island Video Producers, I'm the last hit of page one of Google for the welcome message, which is one minute and 16 seconds long. I've actually gotten business, not so far from here. Some guy said, I found you on Google, you're close enough, I want to work with somebody in the area. So I'm the last hit, and not because it's that I, I spend every single day trying to move my, myself up in ranking, it just, you know, it just worked. The keywords that you put in, Long Island Video Producer, the video is tracked in that respect. So sometimes you get lucky. But in conjunction, you're gonna, um, gonna, gonna go into detail on this one too, that extend the videos across the social networking platform. So Jeff Ogden in this very room did a presentation for the HIA, I met him, I filmed it. He and I got together, we did a private piece and he interviewed me about this very subject and this very uh, situation. I actually produced the video myself. I gave him video credits as if his company produced it because I've made so many videos. I don't, I'm no longer on trial proving that I make videos. I'd rather have third-party testimonial that somebody made a video about me. So I'd rather give away production credit and, and essentially, as they say, toot your own horn. After he put it on his YouTube page, I then went to his YouTube page gave it the thumbs up and liked it, and went on my Facebook page and said, hey, check out the video of me being interviewed by a nationally recognized marketing expert. 
Okay, and then, you know, within the next day or so for comments and hey, thumbs up, great video, blah, blah, blah. And if I really got behind it, I could have tried to push it into, you know, the next week or deeper into that. But this becomes a pr part of my permanent record on Facebook. That people check me out on, on my Facebook account, see that, the, that other people are doing videos about it. So, a quick, I only have two sides on websites, but a website, in my opi opinion, I'm a very cynical <coughs> person. Remember we said there's only about eight or nine slots on the first page of Google? There are companies, if you give them ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, they will try to get you on the first page of Google, okay? And you gotta define what exactly your goals are for what subject. But most people, if everyone's trying, and if you're in banking, for example, and there's millions of bankers, then you better have some really talented people watching it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So what I'm saying is that no matter what, always think of your website as first and foremost being a sales letter. Because you will never disappoint yourself if that as a sales letter, people find your message once they meet you at an event like this, or out and about, or bump into you, or get a business card off the ground. So minimum, if you, you'll never be disappointed if you treat your website first as a sales letter about your business. And if you happen to get traffic through Google, either paying somebody thousands of dollars or you just got lucky, like me being a website developer with a YouTube strategy, bonus plan, I just saved 10 grand. So number one is a sales letter open 24 hours a day, seven days a week in full color with video and pictures. And I say these days there's a lot of social networking experts running around, a lot of members of the HIA. And I say cynically that some of them are just 20 year old somethings that their parents want them out of the house. So essentially they say, well, I'm, I'm a social networking expert now, right? Uh, so be careful, you know, just check out their track record. It's okay to ask for references. I'm sure you guys have lots of companies that will praise your activities and they, they know that the sales growth has happened because of activities in that respect. But you know, don't believe the first 20 year old who rolls off the street and says I'm a social networking expert, okay? They all are, <laughs> all right? Think sales letter first, and, we, and my one guarantee is 100% of the people you hand your business card to will find your website. Make sense? As long as you spell it right. So you'll never be disappointed because that's the bare minimum of a salesperson open 24 hours a day. Everybody wants to be on page one, but it's shrinking. I think I peeked ahead because they send me the slides first. I read yours, and you, you have a slide that says over 75% of people do not look past page one, right? So. He's going to have a slide saying over 75% of people don't look past page one. So essentially, it means everybody it means everybody is viciously competing to be one of 10, 10 slots. And in certain industry, that's great for lawnmower repair because the competition are Neanderthal. But in most cases, it's an uphill battle. It truly is. With the mixed search results or Google Maps, it's, it's taking more and more results away. Uh, here's another tip. The new Google Plus platform even though you don't like it as much as you like Facebook, get yourself an account because Google is trending towards selfishly making their websites show up first, including Google Plus. So your Google Plus profile will come up before your Facebook profile will come up because Facebook's a competitor and Google put a lot of money into the Plus platform. Okay? Whether you, whether you love your Plus account, just make it and leave it at that. All right? So, so page one for what? New York banker or Ronald the banking dude? Anyone here can make you number one for Ronald the banking dude. I know that because I Googled it and all the results are not relevant. I got Ronald McDonald, I got Ronald McDonald House, I got banks, but I did not get Ronald the banking dude. But it's a real serious uphill battle to be found on page one for New York banker. Would you guys agree? Uh, Ronald the Banking Dude. If you happen to be Ronald the Banking Dude, go for it, you know? But it's, it's, so, so what are they promising you for $10,000? You know, get you found for your company name, big deal. Or get you found for a very competitive industry and they really should know what they're doing if you're gonna do that, okay? A video's gonna provide quality content. You're gonna go into details on content. It's more personable, it's getting to know you. And by the way, that's a good thing. Uh, Roger's, again, been doing videos long before I have, and if I'm, I'm gonna put words in, inside his mouth. But back in the day, when he met somebody at an event like this, you would sit down with him, he'd open up his laptop, he'd prove to you that he's a video producer, and, it, and if you're convinced, you'll then pitch your idea to Roger. 
Remember those days, Roger? I do. Exactly. I'm, I was his website developer, uh, still am, years ago, and now actually Roger does websites also. Well, these days, because of his YouTube page, when somebody sits down with Roger, they're already convinced he knows what he's doing. And because of that, now they're going to, the first thing to do is start pitching his idea. Is that correct? These days you don't have to prove that you know what you're doing because they've seen your page. Thank God for that. Exactly. So my point is that there are probably people who looked at his page and just wasn't their style. Okay? And they, they self-sorted themselves out of it, which means one less cup of coffee to be paid for. If they didn't like his style, it saves him time, it saves them time, but the ones who decide to sit down with him already know that he can produce what they want. Now they're going to just propose the idea and hope they can afford it. Does that make sense? So it's a huge time-saving tool, either eliminating somebody or you know, moving forward with somebody. So they get to know you, share your expertise. Okay, Rogers. Preserve, all right? Now, as long as he hasn't filmed to that back wall, we don't know exactly how many people in there are in this room. It's our little secret. Don't say the number, all right? So as long as he doesn't pan all the way that way, it seems like we have the first three rows pretty full, all right? two camera angles, which means that in the future, the three of us can re-edit this, prove that the HIA used us as subject matter experts, immortalize the content, remove some ums to make us look more intelligent than we actually are, and uh, use it again and again. Right? Right, guys? I mean, that's why, that's why we film it. So toot your own horn. Or again, with, as I said with Jeff, him tooting my horn, but I did the production work. The end result is somebody talking about me as if I'm a you know, renowned expert on video production. So again, it's you when you have when you control the camera, you control the message, which is really cool. So, and finally, show and tell. A lot of you have assets that are too heavy. Any printers? I have one printer here, right? Where's the printer? She no, left. She, she left. Okay. Well, you probably have assets that are too heavy to carry around and say, "Look what I got." All right. So I'm going to show you something really fast really fast, just so, so you know what to do this summer. Um, you guys are, this is an HIA member. I met them at a new member. Yeah, yeah. Oops. If you are looking for an affordable, family-friendly, and fun day trip, look no further than West Sayville, Long Island, and the historical sailing oyster sloop, the Priscilla. The Priscilla is the floating ambassador of the Long Island Maritime Museum and she is open for public sailing and private charters. Priscilla is a 60-foot oyster sloop built in 1888 and fully restored in 2002 to her original glory. Be part of living history when the crew raises the sail and cuts the engine. You, your friends, and family can sail the Great South Bay in a vessel reminiscent of the heyday of Long Island's dominance in the oyster industry. You may even be one of the lucky... So it was a lot of fun, but would you just take my word for it if I just had a still picture of a, of a sailboat, or if you actually have people experiencing a good time on Long Island, and by the way, it's quite reasonable, so look into it. It's a phenomenal trip. So this weighs tons. The thing is like, uh, it's a ridiculous weight. They actually made them put more weight in the heel just so it stays upright at all times. So the thing weighs a ton. They're not going to carry it around to HIA show saying, look what we got. All right, they leave it in the water. So the video brings the Priscilla to us, and any of you might explore looking into taking a Priscilla trip this summer. Now because of the video, you've got a further reach than, than you would have before. So versus just seeing a picture on a, on a website of just a side of a sailboat versus seeing a video, uh, big, big different. If a picture's worth a thousand words, as Arthur said, then a video must be worth a million words. It creates awareness, and. It, and consistency, the exact same presentation each time. You remove the ums, you drop the B-roll, you cover up the, the faux pas. If you're not feeling good, you film it again until you've got your best work ever. Uh, robotics competition, I've got a video on that, we're gonna skip that. And, um, but the same thing, how do you express having 55 teams in the Hofstra, anyone ever been to the robotics competition? 55 teams, the entire Hofstra gym complex, all competing on this massive computerized lights in motion, full screen. It's just an, it's an, a technical phenomenon seeing what these high school kids are doing and, and finding out that they built the robot ground up from scratch is even more amazing. Um, how do you immortalize that and just set, you know, walk around with a trifold brochure going, yeah, have you heard about the robotics competition? I filmed that for two days and we've got some videos out of that. 
Quick tips, use a tripod, use an external microphone. That way you get the sound off of, off of the camera. Don't scream over the action. If you're narrating, I saw a video of, of a company that does cement mixers, and they're going, this is our brand new cement mixer, it's so and so, how are you wait, you know. It was the most unprofessional video I've ever seen, somebody screaming over a, a cement mixer. If that were my client, I would have filmed the cement mixer doing its thing, come back, and put the narration in as, as an audio track, not in competition with it. Try to get hurt, you know? I say that joking, but let's be honest, you know, puppies, kids, and people getting hurt, they, they go viral. <laughs> they really do. So, uh, by the way, don't get hurt. Keep it shorter, two to six minutes, because people have a very short attention span, and you can have a lot of fun with green screen. You can add it to a lot of serious special effects, uh, you know, actually using green screen. Legal tips, do not use licensed music, do not use other people's photos, do not use licensed videos. Um, we're businesses, they will sue us, they're not gonna go after the 10 year old who, who stole a Bon Jovi song, 10 year old doesn't have kids, what do they, what do they I mean, on money, what do they do, get the piggy bank? They will go after a company un, until you add all your assets. So do not use stuff that don't belong to you. Or finally hire somebody, you know, three people in this room do videos, put, it, put us in a bidding war, it'll be funny. Videos come down in price. You no longer have to burn DVDs. YouTube is a phenomenal platform. And back in the day when Roger and I first started doing videos, or when I asked his website developer to put new videos on his website, remember you'd, we'd click on a video that says, click here to install the so-and-so driver, hit next, 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 reboot your browser, reboot your computer. Do you really want to see somebody's welcome message that badly? YouTube has, has really leveled the playing field because it works all the time, anytime, regardless of what kind of computer you have. And that's really what YouTube has done to the world. Forget these, the searching, it's just uniform, consistent video. And don't forget that YouTube is a direct link to, uh, to Google, all right? That's the strategy here. All right, that's it for me. Um, next person.